All right, so this one's going to be product and some product identities. So product sum and some product identities. So as you can tell, this one, we're probably going to be multiplying. And we're going to be multiplying trig functions that involve adding angles or vice versa. So let's take a look at this one. So our objective in this lesson is to examine and apply product sum. And so I swear these objectives, like, they started off really good, and then after a while, they just kind of went, eh. So remember, guys, I think the guided notes are very helpful for these. So you guys can always fill these out uh, while you're watching the video. So in this lesson, you will boop. <laughs> boop. I bet you guys wish you knew this when you took Miss Anoush. And then you can just paste the stuff in there. All right. Anyways. So again, guys, always watch these videos. I'm just not going to do videos within videos. I just not a big fan of, hey, guys, let's watch me watch this video. Uh, so one of the things we're going to be talking about is sound frequencies. So sound frequencies, um, they travel in waves. So when we're talking about this, uh, frequency is how a hertz represents a cycle, like a full cycle. So you know like sine, when it repeats over and over again, that's a cycle. How many times this cycle happens in a second? So sound obviously travels really fast, so that's why that's happening uh, so fast. Uh, this note can be represented by this frequency. So we see right here. 400, oh, I wish they didn't cut it off because I can't even read what that is now. Um, and it's going to be equal to another note. So sound waves are represented, for example, tuning forks. So we're trying to make a certain sound wave equal to another sound wave. It's what it's talking about. And sine trig functions are really good for figuring this out because it just, they repeat. So when we're subtracting certain formulas, we get different types of sounds. So they might have a small amplitude going up and down, and then they might repeat the opposite way. So you get this kind of like double hump here. So this one starts off little, then it amplifies, then it goes little. And it looks like it cuts off, looks like it flips over after a while. So let's get into this. So what are they doing here? So if we wanted to subtract this, we would have to use the uh, sum formulas. So let me go into, again, I'm going to keep using this because I started using the cheat sheet. And that's just how I. I know how to do it because I've always used this cheat sheet ever since I found it in college. Um, before, I literally just had to use a textbook and look up the thing. So to me, this, this is very helpful. <laughs> and we're looking at the sum formula. Sum, and we're also looking at the difference formula of cosine. So if we're looking at sum and difference of cosine, we see these two formulas right here. So that's where they're getting those from. So they're rewriting it. And now they're just going to bring it down. So if we sub subtract those, do this. They're div Why are they dividing both sides? Oh, so basically when you do this, subtract these two, you're going to get this. Everything cancels out except for, uh, where is it? This and this. Sine V, sine 2 V. Because these are both negative. Because when we distribute this, it makes this negative, which makes that negative. Does that kind of make sense? I'm sorry, I know it's kind of redundant. No. <laughs> but there is no negative. So it's just a negative turns it, or a positive turns into a negative. Dang it, Garrett, now you messed me up. 
<laughs> so what they're doing here is they're just going to divide this by 2 to get rid of that negative 2 there. So that's why they're dividing there. If we distribute, uh, so they want to distribute the negative only, we get this formula and we can rewrite it. So in other words, if we're doing a product, we can turn this into a, a sum of two other things. So we're turning a product function into this. So what they're doing here is this, you're going to get into like further advanced calculus. Um, integrals are a way to find the area under a curve. So I don't think we're going to we identify and rewrite this for problem for calculus. So right now we're just going to learn what the formulas are. And in calculus, so in college, when you guys take this in college, uh, you'll see why you have to do this. So a lot of calculus is rewriting formulas in a way that makes it easier to solve. I think in my calculus class, I only really... I rarely used a calculator. A lot of it was just rewriting formulas. And we're going to do the same thing here. So if you guys need to see the, I did, did it have the formulas right next to it last time? They didn't. They only have it, this one, where I don't need it anymore. Thanks, Edmento. So now we're going to do, what happens if we add these two uh, formulas together. Well, if we add them, we can use the same logic, except this time, instead of it being sine u, s u, it's going to be 2. So when we do this, everything cancels out except for these two cosine u, cosine v. So cosine u, cosine v stays there. We can divide everything by 2, and we get this. So adding these two formulas, if we were to add these, cut it in half, we would get the product. So that was just proving the formula. Now we're going to apply them. All right, so if we're doing this right here, so add, add the sum and difference identities to derive this. So we want to derive this formula. So we want to make this side equal the other side. And we're only going to use sum and difference formulas. So we're going to look at the sine, sine x plus y. So sine x plus y, this will be this right here, cosine of alpha. So remember, sine is the one that it does follow what it says here, but it starts off with sine, obviously. And it's always the first angle times cosine of the second angle plus sine of the second angle times cosine of the first angle. So first angle is that one. Second angle is this. Just to make them stand out a little bit more. All right, so from there, give me a second. Ah. Ah. And I'm going to just write it out because the keyboard setup at the center is very weird. Like my keyboard's on this laptop and then my portable monitor like doesn't have a keyboard. Yeah, I got a portable monitor. I, I don't see why, but okay. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do that. <laughs> well, all right. And then we're going to do the one half here. Now we're going to subtract. We're going to do it again, but this time with the difference. So I'm going to use another parentheses. So uh, let me erase some of this. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to, this was the blue parentheses. Now I'm going to do a red parentheses. So this should be a plus. So now I'm going to add this. So this is going to be sine of our first angle, cosine of our second angle. Now it's minus 
sine of our second angle, cosine of our first angle. Uh, we're going to distribute that plus sign. So if we look, notice here, this angle is the same as this angle, and we're adding them. So this becomes a 2 sine x cosine y. And then from there, we see that this angle is the same as this angle, but this is a negative. So that kind of just cancels out. And we're just left with this, right? So we're just left with this, but guess what? We're times the one half. So this ends up being sine of x cosine of y. So that's the work right there. Um, if you guys type this out, you'll probably have a lot more room to write this. This is supposed to be a y, by the way. Does that make sense, guys? That's literally, so for these problems, we're literally just using the formulas to derive them. And if you guys want to see it typed out nicely, here it is. So I don't like how they do it because they don't show all the work. All right, so now we're going to derive it the other way. So what happens? If, isn't this the same one? Sine x, you said, that, oh, wait, subtract these. Um, so there's a typo, guys. This is supposed to have a subtraction right here. And Mentum used the same equation. They just didn't realize to change that to a plus. So when you guys get here, um, just be aware that and Mentum doesn't proofread their stuff, apparently. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do one half of sine x cosine y plus sine y cosine x. So remember, when you're doing the sum formula for sine, it's just start off with sine of x, sine of the first one, times cosine of the second angle, plus, because there's a plus sign there, sine of the second angle, cosine. And you can swap these around if you want. It doesn't make that big of a difference. Um, this one it would because there's a negative sign, obviously. So, and then we're going to do plus sine x cosine y minus sine y. Oh, I forgot about their typo. Oh my gosh, why didn't you guys say anything? I blame Garrett everything <laughs> so what happens here is once we distribute this becomes a positive sine x cos cosine x cosine x sine y cosine y there we go black <laughs> all right so this ends up canceling out with this, and we end up getting 2 sine y cosine x. Isn't this the same as the other one? Oh, no, because this is sine y. They just put the x first, so they just have it backwards. So they flip-flopped it. They went, uh, we want to put the x first, so they put the cosine first, and then they put the sine. So it's basically the same thing. It's just different things cancel out. So we have to put that very, this thing becomes this really long equation right here, and then this is this really long equation. But when we distribute the negative that they forgot to do, <laughs> Um, different things cancel out. 
So just evaluate this and just be like, it's a pain in the butt having to write it. That I don't like how they do it. It is. It looks kind of nicer, but they don't even show why it's to that. They don't show the canceling out. So if you guys need to see it some more again, feel free to rewind it on the YouTube channel or the class. All right. So let's see here. Um, moving on to the next one. How do I move on to the next? Oh, derp. All right. And let's do this. So here are all of your formulas. So you might want to copy this down somewhere uh, or print this slide out. Or just remember that it is right here, product to sum formulas. And then sum to product formulas we'll get into later on in the unit. All right. So we'll leave there for today since we derived the formulas already. We got almost halfway through it. So we'll start on slide 10 uh, on Wednesday.